hi everyone, welcome back. So we're going to take a look at modals of speculation now. So these are really important, a uh, very important grammar point that examiners absolutely need to hear from you um, in this task. Because it is a speculative task, that's what they're asking you to do. You don't know what the situation is in the photo you're looking at. So you do just need to guess or speculate. And to do that, you need modals of speculation. So, usually within the task itself, you will already have these modal verbs, okay? So, for example, if we look at this task, why might people be communicating in this way? How effective might this form of communication be? Okay, they're already asking you with might, so you can respond with might as well. You can also respond with some other modals of communication, which I'm going to show you now. Okay. So your modals of speculation in the present, you can use might, may, or could with be and a verb and ing. Okay. So if we're describing this photo here, it looks as if she might be writing a birthday card, perhaps to her mum. Okay, so we've got might, be, and a verb, and ing. That is to describe something happening in the present or to speculate about something happening in the present. You can use might, may, and could in exactly the same way. There's no difference. Um, and this is just used if you're not sure about something. If you're not 100% sure, then you can use might, may, or could. She might be writing a birthday card to her mum. You don't know. So we use might be, okay? So if we take a look at the next task here, um, what might the people be feeling like in these situations? Again, you've been asked with might, okay? How long might this feeling last? Okay, so again, you need to speculate. So for example, using the present, you can now use must be. So if you are absolutely sure, 100% sure about a situation, you can use must be and a verb and ing. So she must be feeling absolutely ecstatic after being proposed to. Okay, you're absolutely sure. If you're not sure, again, you use might be, could be, maybe. If you're 100% sure, we use must be. So that's in the present. If you want to use it in the past, then you need to use have and a past participle. Okay, so she must have graduated I mean, you know she has because she has a graduation hat on her head, so she must have graduated. Okay, She must have graduated, so she's probably feeling really proud of herself. Okay, Again, you could even say must be feeling really proud of herself. If you're 100% sure, then that's fine. Okay. So in the past, we use have and a past participle. Okay, if we, again we go on to this one, we've seen this a few times now. Why might people prefer to learn these things on their own? What difficulties might they have? Again, we're speculating with might. So if you want to use the past, again we use have and a past participle, but if you're not sure, you use might, could, and may. Okay, so he, for example, he might have already tried uh, with a teacher but had a bad experience and decided to go it alone. Okay, so that's our past. He might have, you can use already in there as well, and a past participle. Okay. So, might have and a past participle if you're unsure in the past, must have and a past participle if you're 100% sure in the past. Okay. Might, could, may, be in a verb and ing for present or must be in a verb and ing for present. Okay, so they're the two main grammar points that you need to use in speaking part two, comparatives and modals of speculation. So we're pretty much done for speaking part two now, so I'm going to give you um, an assignment. So if you head on over to the next lecture, I'm going to explain the assignment to you and then you can do that before heading on to speaking part three. Okay, so I'll see you in the next lecture.